What's going on everybody? Pro Rogue Bear here. My name is Ben and today we're going to be going through how to get rounded corners or any shape for that matter in your webcam or your cam link so that you can show that new shape on OBS or slobs or wherever. Let's jump into it. As a reminder guys as well, any likes, dislikes, comments, all that kind of stuff is all welcome and helpful. Let me know below how you found the video, if it got any tips, if you uh, found it helpful or at all or anything like that and what else you'd like to see. I'd be more than happy to go through that. You can also catch me over on twitch.tv forward slash prorogbear as well. We stream every day apart from Tuesday and Friday and we always start at 7pm UK time. Variety channel, so we play a mixture of different games. but come say hi and feel free to ask any questions while you're over there as well. So what you're going to need for this, I'm going to do this on Photoshop, but you can use Affinity Photo, you can you can use paint.net, you can use whatever you want basically. There's a, there's a few different uh, things here. Basically it just works to have something that can control the layers and, um, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to create our image mask. So what you can do is you can come to uh, width and height here when you're first starting and you can just choose 920 by 1080. Um, preset detail, we can just call this, um, uh, I don't know, webcam rounded corners, for instance, right? And I keep everything else the same, including the white background and I click create. And we've got this now up here all ready. So we've got our background and it's locked. Um, so what we want to do is we just want to create rounded rectangle. So you will probably have it looking like that with a rectangle. You can right click rounded rectangle and instead of dragging it out, you just want to just click the canvas and it will come up with your width and height. Now in here, we're just going to put 1920 by 1080 and you can do 10, you can do 130 pixels. You can do 110. Um, you can do 150. It all depends how rounded you want them. Um, for this one, let's do 140. And you just want to click OK. And we can see here it has created the shape for us. So we can just center this then. We can just pop it in the middle. We can kind of see this is the 140 curve um, on our on our future webcam. So this middle bit is where what's going to be our camera, essentially, or whether that's your webcam or whatever. Um, you could also make this into a circle. You could also do it, do just an ellipsis tool and create a circle and have it a little bit like a loom video or, you know, just, just, just a little circle of yourself instead. Um, if you don't want that kind of wide angle, kind of widescreen effect. Um, but in this one, we're just going to, we'll show you the rectangle version, um, which is similar to what I've got. So we've, uh, We've got the corners rounded. Now, what we want to do is we want to invert this um, because otherwise there's an extra step where in OBS, we need to change the white to pick up the black. Um, usually I found this always better to merge these. So what we can do is we can right click and we can then uh, merge the layers and that will create one item. All right. So what we want to do next is we want to double click this and just unlock the layer. And so this is just unlock the background because obviously the background was locked beforehand. So it, when we merged it, it kept that together. So we shouldn't have a little padlock here anymore. And we should now be able to just go up to, um, to layer, adjustment layer, click invert. And you don't really need to give it a name, but we just do that and click OK. And I'll just switch it so you got the black corner. So now imagine the black space is what's disappearing and the white is what's going to stay. This is what your camera is going to look like once we're done. So we're now all good here. So we can now either hide these layers and create a new layer and create the shadow if we want. Um, you can create a new, like create it in a new document if you want. I found it easy just to create a new layer. And um, so I just went up to layer, new, new layer. And we just call this shadow. 
Now, if we just hide everything else for now, so we're back to a blank canvas and we want this background. We want this uh, transparent background. And we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to do 1920 by 1080. Keep the same radii on your pixels as you had before. Click OK. We we'll go back here and again, we can just drag this into the middle. Now, we want this to be a little bit smaller because obviously it's going to be offset slightly behind the camera to give it that depth. So you can see in this um, in this kind of camera that we've got going on now, you can see that the uh, that there's that shadow just on this side, sorry, um, just running along this edge. So what we want to do is we want to um, show transform controls. I just want to bring this in a little bit. Now, I brought this in to about 1700 mine center it back again with its new little size just go like that like that there we go okay so with our shape selected we want to add a bit of blur so we're going to go filter blur gaussian blur and we're going to convert to a smart object now we might want to change the the radius of this the density so let's let's do about 12 12 and a half pixels click okay now we've got this but this is too heavy it's not it's not see-through at all so we want to just come down to our opacity i just want to drag this down and this is what gives us the shadow now and this is why it's really important to have the uh, transparent background um so that it is more of a shadow that it's it's see-through so Depending on how dark you want the shadow, um, you might just want a light shadow, say 55% maybe, if we just do that. And we've got everything, we've got everything in here now. And basically, if you want to export out the shadow, then you keep the shadow with the visible um, indicator, export it. And when you want to do the other ones, you make them visible and export them. This one is really important to export as a JPEG. And the other one, the shadow, you want to export as a PNG. So if we uh, if we go ahead and do that now, so we'll do export, export as, and we will put that there. And we'll call that web camera around the corners. That's fine. It's a JPEG, hundred percent done. And these are the ones I I made earlier, basically in true Blue Peter fashion. But we can just say uh, no save that one there done and we can unhighlight them i like that one and we can do the exact same like i said there may be i don't use a lot of photoshop so there may be an easier way to save them all at the same time and choose this one we definitely want as a png we want that transparency ticked it won't work if you don't have that ticked i'll just put a shadow in there export and save okay so we can actually um close photoshop now save why not and again save that in the demo bit done we can close that down and in our obs that we've got over here we can now i'm not going to do it on my actual camera because obviously I can't pull the same at the same time um but with the video capture device you would this would be your webcam this would be your cam link whatever it would be you're going to right click it and you're going to go to filters and you should get this screen you're going to go add image mask blend and you might want to give it a name it's up to you we can just click ok you can browse quickly and i'm going to go to my graphics and assets obs demo and we're going to add the webcam, the white background one, basically the JPEG. And you can see straight away because we've inverted it and it's already defaulted to white. We don't have to change the color around. I found when I left it and I didn't invert it and I switched the colors to black, it wouldn't pick it up. It wouldn't round the corners. So I don't know. I've I found that inverting it and doing it this way works and it helps you to get those rounded corners then. So we've got those got those all there. And exactly the same method if you did this as a circle you did this as a thinner rectangular bar for that more kind of widescreen look with the black bars either side um 
entirely up to you. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. So feel free um, to be creative as you want with this on that side of things. Um, so we can click close once that's done. And you can see here now we've got, oh, I grouped them, didn't I? Group them. Let's, uh, let's remove this one from the group. Ooh. Remove this one from the group. Um, get out. There we go. So we can we can keep the group locked and with game capture we've got this here. Now, if I want to think, because otherwise we're not going to be able to see the. Uh, let me put full guys back up again. I'm just thinking we're not going to be able to see the uh, the shadow effect to its truest kind of level without some kind of colorful background. So let's just pop open a game quick. And we'll just uh, keep that all there. There we go. So we've we can we've got this up now. We should go to the main menu, and we will then have we'll be able to put our shadow in. So what we want to do is we want to add we want to add an image, and you might want to call this one shadow. Pop that in there. Click OK. Browse, and again OBS demo shadow. Now because we've done it with the opacity. And we've done it right with transparency. It's see-through. Okay, it's transparent. If we didn't do that, we saved it as a JPEG, it would come through and we would not be able to see the background. So really important. Now with this, you want the shadow to be a little bit... First of all, we want to put the shadow behind the camera. Okay, layers again. Remember the, the source at the top goes over everything else. And what I try and do is I try and just make it a little bit smaller than what we've currently got. And then you just offset it a bit and you kind of just do this by eye. There's no real kind of down to personal preference, but I kind of put it about there. And then what I do is I'll group both of these. So then they will move together moving forward. If I then want to make the camera a little bit bigger, you can see now we've got that nice shadow that just makes it pop a little bit. And what we could do is with this, we could literally just drag um, just drag that shadow down a little bit just so there's a little bit at the bottom as well and if you're doing this on the right hand side then you might want it like that so you want it kind of if you've got a camera that's going to be in the bottom left corner then you want it kind of maybe over there maybe i don't know it's up to you i've kind of kept mine like that on the right so you can see right now always get confused with <laughs> you can see along this along that edge wow i'm so bad at pointing you can see all along that edge the shadow is still on that side. I just keep it like that. Nice and easy. Um, but it's up to you. You could have it dynamic. So if you've got scenes, you can have it switched over that way or that way. But once you're happy, just remember you can um, you can lock the group and lock the things inside. Um, sorry, don't lock the group, but lock the things inside. And you can then just resize to your heart's content there. And you've just got everything ready then. And it just makes it pop a little bit more. It just makes it, it just makes it pop. So Hopefully that was helpful. If there's any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. Let me know how you found this video. What shapes did you come up with? What things worked for you? What things didn't work for you? What else would you like to see? Leave a comment, like, subscribe, dislike if you didn't like it. It all helps apparently. And it'll let me know what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. Have a good one. Twitch.tv forward slash Pro Bear is where you can find me as well. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Take care.